and welcome back to the Marina Show. Hopefully, I haven't bored you away last time when I was chatting too much. So just to recall, my name is Marina. I'm doing this show. It's the closest thing I can do to become Oprah. Anyways, okay. So today I want to talk to you guys about something that affects all of us, especially young women. And if you're a young man, don't change the channel because this affects you too, whether you know it or not. This is what I want to talk to you guys about. This idea of, I need to look good. I need to be pretty. All my other friends are beautiful. I want to look like them. All of us have something. that We all know what self-esteem is. I'm not here to give you guys that lesson. But as young women, we all have this need to feel beautiful. We always look at what's next to us, and we feel that what we have is not good enough. A personal example in my life is that I'm very tall. I'm going to surprise the cameraman right now by standing up to show you how tall I am. I'm actually huge. Anyways, that's besides the point. I'm very tall for a girl. And other girls look at me and say, oh, I wish I was that tall. And I look at other girls and I say, I wish I was that short. Because when you're this tall, you just feel like you're a giant and you're over everybody. So every girl and every guy always wants something that we don't have. So we ask God, God, you made us this way. I'm struggling with this certain thing in my life about the way that I look. So how do I deal with it? I use, I, I decorate myself, I use makeup, I do all of these things to hide my insecurities. I want people to judge me by how I look. I want to come off as beautiful. And the first thing I want to address is that there's nothing wrong, in my humble opinion, I don't know much about anything, but there's nothing wrong with this desire and this need to want to be beautiful. That is something that God put in our hearts as women. All right? We have that yearning to feel loved, that yearning to want to be beautiful to our beholders, to the people that see us. So my question is, how do we be beautiful? Does the Bible direct us on how to be beautiful? Is there some kind of instructions on how to be beautiful? And you guys are all probably watching this being like, of course not. All that Christian good stuff about, it's not about how you look, la la la. <laughs> Let me tell you something. I'm going to give you some fashion expertise. I'm going to tell you how to be beautiful according to the word. Okay? So, it's actually in there. Yeah, you think I'm wrong? Well, I'm going to read it right out. As I said, a Bible that's falling apart belongs to someone who isn't. Okay. So, let's turn. Turn with me to Peter. The first epistle of Peter, um, chapter 3, verse 3. Okay, so we're talking right about beauty, okay? So you say to me, Marina, you know, you have a lot of fun on this show. You want to be Oprah. You don't know what you're talking about, okay? There's no instructions on the Bible on how to be beautiful. I disagree. I really do. Here it is, okay? So, um, so 3, 3 of Peter. Do not let your beauty be outward adorning of arranging the hair, of wearing gold or of putting on fine apparel. Do not let your beauty. The fact that he says do not let your beauty means that you do have some kind of beauty. Okay, Peter. Okay, St. Peter. Sorry. I understand that my beauty is not what? Arranging of the hair. You guys are going to see on later shows that I don't have straight, nice hair. I'm Egyptian, I have big curly hair, but I'm arranging my hair, wearing a fine apparel, okay? And wearing fine clothing. That's all we do as women. We're obsessed with what's the next store we're gonna buy our clothes from? How's our hair look? Is it parted on the right side? Does it make my face look pretty? That's all we care about as women, okay? But St. Peter, even though this was written how many years ago? 2,000 years ago, he knows the yearning. That's why I'm saying there's nothing wrong with it. The yearning of women. He's saying, I know what you want to be. He wrote this stuff 2,000 years ago. It still applies. Arranging of the hair, wearing of fine apparel, okay, and the wearing of gold. We still have those obsessions 2,000 years later. So he's saying, I understand that you guys want to feel beautiful. So let's find a, let's find your true beauty. And he doesn't stop there, so he doesn't just say, don't let it be of the outward. He actually says, let's find it. Let's find where this beauty is. 
So do not let your beauty be that outward adorning of arranging the hair, the wearing of gold, and the wearing of fine apparel. What does he say? But let it be. So the fact that he says let it be means that there is beauty somewhere. But let it be the hidden person of the heart with the incorruptible ornament of a gentle and quiet spirit which is very precious in the sight of God. We're going to read that one more time. But let it be the hidden person of the heart with the incorruptible ornament of a gentle and quiet spirit which is very precious in the sight of God. So we're going to break that down because a lot of women struggle with this verse. I struggled with it first, but it's actually one of the most liberating things. So he's saying, forget the outward, okay? Let's move inside. And he doesn't just say your internal beauty. He says what? The inner person of the heart. And when I was talking to my G4G kids, the group that I do for young women, and I asked them to, to translate what this means, and one of the girls said, um, but let it be the hidden. She loved that word hidden. Hidden means it's something you can't see. It's something that somebody has to find. It's something that you have to unveil, unravel. It's not there in front of you. This, this face that you see, it's not hidden. You see it just by looking at me. The hidden person of the heart is something sacred. It's something that only people who deserve to see can see. So we're going to look at this hidden person of the heart. What does he say about the hidden person of the heart? Okay, he says, which is the incorruptible ornament. What does the word incorruptible mean? Okay, incorruptible means it cannot be destroyed. It's unperishing. Nothing can touch it. You can be aging and you're still going to have that incorruptible person of the heart. Okay, it's an ornament. Okay. When he says adorning, you know what the word adorning means? I'll teach you, because I like English. You guys need to be educated. We're all here to help each other, okay? The word adorning means enhancing of the beauty. So he's saying, how can I enhance my beauty? Remember, the title of this episode is How to Be Beautiful. You guys all thought I was going to give you fashion advice, but I'm not, even though I could. Anyways, so he's saying the Inner ornament is incorruptible. It's enhancement of beauty that's incorruptible. Flip on the TV. Change channels right now. I'll go away for a little bit. Okay, I'll just stand here frozen. If you change channels, what's going to happen? It's all these oil of Olay, all these commercials, L'Oreal, Lancome, all these people trying to tell you what? How to stay young, how to get rid of your wrinkles. It's because that beauty on the outside is fading and people know that. Scientists know that. They know that that beauty is just something of the youth. I was just reading about this anti-wrinkle cream that's, um, it implants youth activating genes back into your skin. No, we're not supposed to implant youth. Our youth is limited for a reason because the external sides of us, those are limited. Those are corruptible. So St. Peter's like, I'm not worried about what's on your outside. I'm worried about what's on the inside, the incorruptible ornament. Tub, what is it? I don't want to buy this expensive cream here, okay? If it's on the inside and it's free, hook it up, okay? So what is it? Let's look at what it is. Um, but let it be the hidden person of the heart with the incorruptible ornament of a gentle and quiet spirit. Okay, so as you guys can probably tell, I'm not gentle. Well, I am gentle, but I am not quiet. I've been talking for about 15 minutes right now. So right when I read this, I was like, oh, God only likes gentle and quiet. Oh my gosh, right? But that's not what it means. He's not talking about your personality, ladies and gentlemen. He's not talking about the fact that you're quiet in front of people. He's talking about your spirit. Your spirit that's gentle and quiet is something that listens to the words of God, that holds on and is thirsty always for Christ. That's what a gentle and quiet spirit is, Okay. Gentle and quiet just the way that Christ was gentle and quiet. And if you go up in St. Peter, okay, because he says, likewise, you wives. So he's talking to women about their beauty. And if you go up into um, the second chapter, he's talking about how Christ himself was gentle and quiet. Let's read. So he says, who committed no sin, nor was guile found in his mouth, who when he was reviled, did not revile in return. When he suffered, did not threaten but committed himself to him who judges righteously. 
who bore himself our sins in his own body on the tree, and we, having died to sins, might live for righteousness, by whose stripes we were healed. So do you see how that's a gentle and quiet spirit? It's a spirit of suffering. It's a spirit of taking the tribulation, of taking the words of men quietly. Just as Christ did not revile, so too are we to be quiet in our spirit as Christians. So that is the unfading beauty. In other translations, in the New King James, it's unfading beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit. So next time we examine ourselves in front of the mirror for how long? Most girls, I'm going to tell you, men don't be surprised, about 15 to 30 minutes every morning. Think <laughs> of how much sleep you could get, okay? Next time we examine ourselves in front of the mirror, are we examining our insides? And I speak to myself first. Am I examining my inside, Marina? Am I seeing that my soul, that my spirit is gentle and quiet? And why do I care if it's gentle and quiet? Because it's a beauty that's unfading. And if St. Peter, who's inspired by the spirit, is telling me that it's beautiful, I'm not going to disagree. And how do I know it's beautiful? Because something that's beautiful is precious to God. It's precious to God, and that's what he says. He says it right here. For a gentle and quiet spirit, which is not just precious, very precious in the sight of God. So it's very precious in the sight of God. So ladies, I'm here to tell you, stop wasting your time. Stop trying to be shorter, taller, wearing heels, straightening your hair when it's curly. I don't know, getting this, getting that. Okay? Stop for a second and realize that that beauty is, is fading. And the thing that's unfading is that gentle and quiet spirit and wait for the person that's right in your life that is looking for that, that's looking for the hidden person of the heart. Because the only person that knows the hidden person of the heart, the only majesty that knows it is God himself. And to him, that is precious. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time on The Marina Show.